Ceruto, try it again. Fans on the feet, 6,000 in attendance. The payoff is flied into right field, going back at the warning track, at the wall. It's gone! Go ahead, three-run home run for the senior! Peter Ceruto has given the Indiana Hoosiers the lead! Welcome to Talking Hoosier Baseball. We are recording this on Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I am Carl James, joined by Josh Bennett, Chris Feeney, and Cassidy Palmer. The Indiana University baseball team had a 2-2 two two week, including a series win over Belmont that took two 15-run offensive explosions on Saturday and Sunday to overcome a Friday loss. The Hoosiers then jumped on Indiana State with six runs in the first two innings at Bob Warren Field before a pitching and defensive meltdown led to the Sycamores outscoring Indiana 15 to 1 the rest of the way. Um, so uh, some positives and some big concerns that we are uh, going to be recapping here in this week. So to start off with, I'm going to go to Josh. Uh, Josh, what did we learn from this past week? Uh, specifically regarding the pitching woes. Uh, thanks, Carl. Well, uh, like you kind of alluded to, Friday down 4-1 after two. Uh, Ty kept them scoreless for five innings to keep them in the game. Uh, gave the offense a shot to get them back in it, and then, but they were unable to get the timely hit and left 10 guys on base Saturday down five early, but managed to put up runs in every inning but the first scoring 15 runs, but they also left 14 on in that one. Sunday got off to a much better start. We haven't done that for a while. It seems like we're always behind to start the game, but uh, had crooked numbers in four different innings, uh, 15 more runs that game, like you said. And then Tuesday, off to the 6-0 start. Offense scores one run in innings four through nine. So uh, the reality is, they're still pitching a bunch of guys trying to figure out who can give reliable innings. Uh, Ty Rye and Ethan lately have shown that they can pitch in. I'm assuming down from here forward, they'll uh, have the opportunity to provide that when they need it. And of course the staff wanted to be past this stage going into conference play, but unfortunately uh, there's more work to be done. Until that happens, the hitters are going to have to be consistent and carry a big part of this load. I know that's asking a lot because they're putting up some runs, but we've seen short bursts from the offense and even complete games where they've done just that. So we know they're a capable group. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. Cass, uh, what do the numbers say? Thanks, Josh. Uh, the thing that kind of stood out most to me on the week and and the numbers back it up is pitching with two outs it just it it felt so much over the course of the week like pretty much every game that okay we're at two outs and then it just keeps going and going and going uh with with two outs uh the lowest batting average against by the combo of Belmont and Indiana State was 294. And in fact, Indiana State hit 412 with uh, with two outs. That included 73% of the total runs against Indiana State came with two outs. 70% in the second Belmont game, the Saturday game, 67% on Friday, and a measly 43% on uh, Sunday. That's just not a great recipe uh, for success on the mound. Uh, and in fact, there, there were, uh, across the four games, there were eight two-out home runs hit by the opponents. That's not going to help either. That's where a good chunk of all those runs were scored, were those two out home runs. And so while a large bit of the control was, was better this last week, 
Uh, there were there were moments, don't get me wrong, but compared to the week before, the control was better on the week. But those home runs were just killer, particularly the two out ones. Uh, so that just kind of compounds the issues with home runs that the staff has had uh, over the last few weeks. I would really love to see them tighten up with two outs. Like, you got the two outs, let's get the third one, be done. Don't let it keep spiraling. Uh, so those those were the numbers that really stood out to me uh, on, on the week. Uh, Chris, what stood out to you for red belts? Well, thanks, Cass. Uh, definitely another rough week as far as the pitching goes and Hey, we got two wins this week, though. Yeah. You know, last week was only one. Uh, week before that, only one. So we'll look at it that way. We got two for the week, and we'll move on from there. But it has been a struggle. Um, one of the bright spots on the mound was Ethan Phillips, and he's going to get the uh, Joey Donato Red Belt Award. He actually picked up two wins. Uh, his first win was for only throwing that one inning to bridge the game from Kraft to Reisdorf, you know, to uh, – to win that one on Saturday. He gave up a run. He had two strikeouts. Then he goes back on Sunday, starts the game, three innings, two more strikeouts, and again, just gave up one run. So Phillips, you know, pitched really well. And I saw a stat. It was like the first time, I think it was in 17, that uh, somebody got two wins in back-to-back games. They didn't say who it was. My guess is that it was Lloyd, but I don't know. That wasn't uh, part of the promo that they put up. But I think it was Matt Lloyd. That would be my guess. That'd be a good trivia question. Who was the last person? to pick up a W in two consecutive games. Uh, For our hitting red belt, to me, this one was pretty obvious. I went with Tyler Cerny. He had the biggest days of each Saturday and Sunday. He hit the home run to tie it at 5-5 in the third inning on Saturday. And for that day, he had two hits, two walks, three runs scored, and three RBIs. So Saturday alone, you know, was a real big day for him. Then on Sunday, he figures, well, now I'll get three hits. (laughs) I'll get four RBIs. I'll score a run and I'll hit another bomb. So Tyler Cerny for our Alex Dickerson Red Belt Award. And for defense, I mean, if he didn't already have it, it was kind of like Devin Taylor last week. Josh had it already, Josh Pine, for what he did on Saturday with a lot of really great plays at third. But then that dive to his left uh, at Terre Haute, amazing. I see all people putting it up for the uh, Sports Center Top 10. I can't say I watched Sports Center, so I don't know if you made the list. But I hope he did because it was a remarkable play. Uh, But again, it's been a rough start, right? We're 11 and 10, just 5 and 5 at the BART. But there's a lot of home games coming. And with the Big Ten starting now, you know, you get a red belt in a Big Ten series, it's worth even more, right? You get you getting a win against the Big Ten, it's worth even more. So uh, the background on my uh, screen there had to change because of some technical stuff. But don't jump off the bridge yet, okay? It's early. And uh, (laughs) – You see the sun there, right? Somebody once told me uh, it's darkest before dawn, so things could be worse. Let's uh, let's pitch well enough and score a lot this weekend and uh, see what we can pull off. But for the red belts for the week, we got Ethan Phillips, Tyler Cerny, and Josh Pine. And uh, speaking of that weekend series, Cass is going to break down a little preview on the Fighting Illini. Yes, thanks, Chris. Uh, Illinois is sitting at 8-11 and 11 so far on the season, uh, but of note, they are 0-6 on the road in true road games, not counting the neutral site stuff. Uh, and they're sitting at 134 in the RPI uh, thus far, but again, RPI is still in that, yeah, it's still doing funky stuff range. Starting to straighten out a bit, but still pretty early uh, coming into the season it was thought that uh that the illinois bats would be pretty solid because they're returning a lot of bats that hit really well last year uh, but thus far on the season they're only hitting 243 as a team uh they do have 26 home runs uh so far so they they are hitting it pretty hard when they do. They're just struggling to hit it a bit. Uh, of note, a uh, couple of couple of offensive guys to watch for. Uh, Camden 
Janik, uh, he is currently the only guy hitting above 300 at 333. Uh, he has four home runs, but he has only struck out five times so far this season. Uh, and he's walked 10 times. So he is not a guy who strikes out a lot at all. He's going to be a big one to watch. Uh, on the power side, another couple, their, their batting averages don't look it right now. But uh, Drake Westcott, a uh, redshirt junior, he had 18 home runs last year, and he's already up to five so far this year. He's only batting 246, but if he gets a hold of one, he gets a hold of one. Uh, and then Ryan Mormon, also a junior, uh, he's only hitting 176, and in that 176, he has four home runs. So they've got some guys who can hit it really hard if they get a hold of one. Uh, so that's going to be something to watch. Again, these guys were expected to hit better than they are right now on the season. So that's going to be something to watch for uh, with with this pitching staff that struggled with a Belmont offense that hadn't been hitting very well on the season. So uh, it, it could actually turn it into a bit of a uh, shootout. Uh on the weekend as the uh, Illinois pitching staff has also had their own bumps Uh, as a staff. They have a six, seven, six ERA. Their, their whip is actually not horrible uh, as a collect at a collective one, five, nine, but they have given up 35 home runs, which is never going to help. Um, We know that Jack Crowder will be starting on Friday facing uh, Ethan Phillips on the Indiana side. Uh, Crowder is, is a power, power righty uh, hit hitting low to mid nineties. And he's a senior. He's been around the block a few times. Uh, His ERA looks a little inflated right now because of um, one pretty poor outing. Uh, but he's sitting at a 588 ERA in 26 innings. Uh, the batting average against is just 257, and he's struck out 22 guys. Uh, I, I'm glad I looked at the notes before uh, hopping on to see that uh, they're they're getting a new weekend starter in the mix this weekend with Cooper Omens. Uh, moving from the midweek start and weekend relief kind of role, he will be starting on Saturday. He has been statistically their best pitcher. He's sitting at a one four five ERA in 18 and two thirds innings pitched. His whip is sitting just above one at 1.07. And he's got a batting average against of just 194. This, this, I, I was going to say kid he's he's a grad student uh so he he if, if the senior's been around the block a few times the grad student has too uh so he's going to be starting on Saturday and and that's one to be more concerned about at this point um Sunday is uh and and Connor Foley will be starting on the Indiana side Sunday is a complete grab bag of TBD versus TBD uh, but looking at the stats, I would guess the starter for Illinois would be Jake Schwartz. Uh, he had kind of started on Saturdays or Sundays, kind of interchangeably. He's got a 429 ERA, 269 batting average against. Uh, he's a solid one that I would expect to probably pick up the Sunday start unless they use him in relief. Uh, Logan Tabling is the other guy in there. He's a senior. He's another one who's been kind of roughed up on the ERA side with a 7.56 ERA, but he's only got a 197 batting average against and a 1.5 whip. So they've got guys who can throw. They've just got oddly high ERAs right now. Uh, and the one other guy to watch in the bullpen is Joe Glassy. Again, the 657 ERA doesn't look too great, but he's got a 1.30 whip. Uh, so, yeah, so they've had their own bumps on the mound. I would not be surprised to see the scores run up a little bit both directions in this one with some offenses that do have some power. 
Uh, so that's Illinois. Uh, Josh, what do you have for Middle Tennessee? Uh, thanks, Cass. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying rain permitting because the forecast does not look good. But Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Big Ten Network Plus and at the BART, the Hoosiers are scheduled to play Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders at a conference USA. Uh, the Raiders are 9 and 10 at this point in the season. We do have a common opponent with them. They lost 6-1 to Alabama in the first week's midweek. Uh, they're 1-3 and three so far this season in midweek contests, but they have scored 8 and 9 runs in their last two. Uh, since this is a midweek, I'm not going to get too in-depth in the pitching. Um, they do what pretty much most teams do and throw the sink at you. Uh, the team ERA is sitting right at 7. Uh, offensively, they have five guys hitting over 300. Uh, they're led by senior catcher Briggs Rudder. He's hitting 451, uh, and that's not just an early sample size uh, thing. He's hitting 327 for his career. Uh, he's got 24 RBI on the year. Uh, another big guy is senior third baseman Gabe Jennings. He's hitting 410. And then freshman first baseman Trace Phillips is leading the team with five home runs. Um, they do strike out twice as many times as they walk. Uh, they're 34 out of 47 on the base pass, so I would expect the run game will be uh, something that they'll they'll want to try to take advantage of, um, even with our guys behind the plate being able to shut that down fairly well. Uh, so that's my preview of Middle Tennessee State. Hopefully they can get that one in. Um, so Carl and IU base reporter Zach Horowitz were in the media scrum today with Coach. Uh, Carl, what did Coach have to say? Before I get into that, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I got it. Uh, before I get into that, Josh, uh, I did want to circle back to something that uh, that Chris said earlier, talking about the uh, two wins in a row. Um, I went ahead and went to the 2017 schedule, picked two two days in which the team won in a row, and I bizarrely picked the right two. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Who was it, Lloyd? It was, in fact, Matt Lloyd. I was nice. saying. But even even more interesting than this is uh, um, Phillips did it on March 16th and 17th of 2024. Lloyd did it on March 16th and 17th of 2017. Wow. No. <laughs> What's that, Penn State? Nope. Took a guess. Well, it, when I looked at the schedule, it, the, this is the reason I picked it because I'm like, this makes sense because of the very weird nature of the series and when it took place. It we was a four-game midweek series. Really? Two uh, home, two away? Evansville or nope. Butler? Two home. So they were all home, and they were during a week. Hawaii? Nope. Hawaii, Hawaii? yes. Hawaii, oh. yes. <laughs> wow. I remember listening to those. I was working nights. So I felt like I was cheating. You guys were all staying up late, and I was getting paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yes, the I first had no two idea games. What it was, but I just thought it would be Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd got the two wins in the uh, first two win, two, first two games of that series. So, Very sorry, cool. I had to. I, I, I just, I, I want to. I, I just I, let me try this real quick. I was like stunned that I got it the first time. So, nice. <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. But nice. you were right, Chris. You were absolutely right. It was in fact Matt Lloyd. I just figured because they maybe uh, they would come out of maybe relief, honestly, because you remember how, yeah. how many innings he was throwing. Forget it. Yep. Yep. He also later was it was in 2019, I think, that he had uh, two saves in one day. That's Penn State. Okay. <laughs> That's Penn State, and they were giving out. I think they were giving out like a bobblehead or something in between, and it was very disappointing. I remember people were like this is <laughs> this is the best. This is what they're giving out. I remember seeing on Twitter, and then Lloyd got another. One. I was in New York, I think. Oh man, cool. that's great. All right. Well, uh, media media today uh, was uh, it was entertaining. And when I get it up, you guys are going to want to listen to it. Trust me. Uh, just just really for the portion of uh, the uh, the five minutes of questions back and forth that Josh Pine got exclusively on haircuts. So um, that that it is very entertaining and very well worth it. 
Um, and and nice. Connor Foley is not getting his haircut. If anybody was wanting that, that's not happening. That was made very clear. Uh, what about Cerny? Did they get him yet? Did you see him today at practice? Uh, Cerny still had his uh, still had his hair. Yes. Uh, Maybe he told us also... that he would not do it. And uh, Brock yeah. said, we'll get him. We'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that I don't think Brock's winning that battle. Uh, oh. Josh gave up on on Foley, although he he, he stressed that he is very disappointed. So uh... as he should be. <laughs> but uh, as far as uh, coach goes. Uh... The big one is it's just that we haven't played as good a defense. And so you get away from being able to practice every day and get away from your kind of your routine, your, your defensive routines, and, and you're, you're gone for three or four weeks in a row. And um, you just kind of get out of your out of, out of what you're accustomed to. And, and so one play here and one play there. And, you know, you, you just the level of teams that we've played against, you're just not able to you're not able to to, uh, to make those kind of mistakes realistically and expect to, not to do damage. And then I would think this the, the second piece um, the week there where we got off schedule was was, was hurtful on that. Where you had some opportunities there, <clears throat> probably a couple of those games don't don't go that way if you're able to have people more lined up on the mound. And um, you know it, it doesn't it doesn't. Um, you look at the Indiana State game for instance. You know, make three or four years and we lose a fly ball in the sun. And if we take care of the ball, we're we're probably at or about that number uh, for that. So you look at some of the defensive miscues and then you look at kind of getting backed up uh, with your game schedule on the mound and and it's kind of a recipe for. Um, uh, for 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 not success, the opposite of success. So, uh, just getting back, you know, practice back to back days this week is a big deal, and trying to get lined up on the mound and, and take care of the ball uh, at a, at a higher clip, which we've shown the ability to do. We just haven't done it as well as of late. And get the pitchers lined up, kind of try to get guys in the right spots and find the roles for them that they're they're better at. And uh, and some of that's just trial and error. Some of that's you got to find them, got to find the right spot for guys, get them in there, and then get them back out. Um, and then and try to find a good matchup the next guy. So I would say that probably those couple of things have uh, have allowed some of those scores to get sideways. And um, and some days the wind's blowing out, and, and uh, it's just a tough day. So but yeah, we, we we pitched it well against good teams, and and our pitching uh, also goes hand in hand with when we were playing really good defense. So that those two things together, I think would um, would give us a chance to have more success with it. So you feel you can get back to that then? Yeah, yeah, we we can get back to it. You know it. it um, it, it's a long season, and I know everyone says that, but but it really is. And you look at it over a, hopefully a 60 game span, and okay, so the last 10, 10 games or so haven't been the way that we wanted them. The first seven or eight games were, and so hopefully the next 10 games we get we start to regulate and get back into our kind of our normal our normal swings thing. So it, it, there was actually quite a bit of discussion on the coach's attitude. I think about this is really about the fact that it's it it's been good that they're, you know, kind of back into their routines. They're spending a lot of time at the ballpark. They're getting workouts in. They're getting drill work in. Uh, today they tried a completely different – and I'll, I'll have a picture of it uh, up on the site when I when I put out the, uh, the post-game stuff of this very interesting drill. It was actually kind of a game that they, that they were playing in which they had essentially about 12 infielders. Uh, all uh, at the baselines um, and the hitters were, were basically trying to hit the ball over the infielders. Cause if you, with that many infielders, you hit the ball on the ground, it's going to get stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the goal there is to, is to, you know, try to hit head high, high line drives and get it just over the infielders. And they were, uh, they were, they were working that. Although we did see a couple of monster home runs in that process though, too. Uh, Devin Taylor hit one, hit one uh, onto the, the grass hill. So that was, uh, that was fun. Um, nice. yeah. But it, it, there, there was, uh, there was some discussion. Um, I asked Josh Pine about you know, how they have, they had to adjust simply because of, uh, you know, pitchers having better scouting reports. And they said that there, there was, there was a period of time where they, they felt they weren't hitting as well. And that was part of it. And that they've really tried to refocus on fastball timing, um, doing what they do best and what their approaches are. Um, Connor Foley talked about, uh, talked about the fact that, you know, he's got some, uh, ability to you know, shake off pitches and determine what it is he's going to throw, what he's feeling good about, what he sees from a specific hitter. 
that might work in a in a in a in, in a specific you know pitch count. And as we know, you know, Connor struggled a little bit in his first two innings with a primarily fastball mix. Improved greatly when it went when he went to a more uh, off speed mix. And you know, coach has really talked about wanting him wanting Connor to have a better mix overall throughout his out his outing so that they're not they can't just look for the for the for the off speed either and they've got to be expecting that that that, that fastball is going to come from time to time um but you know when i asked coach about the difference between those first 7 games in which all of those first 7 games the team achieved their goal of run prevention less than 7 runs the 14 games following that they have comp- they have achieved that goal one time the one good thing in that is they've managed to win 5 of those games <laughs> but even still you, know, you the goal is to get less than 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 7 cuz that's what's going to give this put this offense in a, in a in a chance to win a game and uh, m- many of the things that Josh was talking about were, were you know, were what came up. Uh, understanding which guys are your essentially a guys from a pitching perspective, getting those guys lined up, getting guys into roles that they know work well. So he specifically talked about Ethan Phillips that getting a game going, those you know first two innings, one time, one time plus through the order, Phillips has done really well in that role. And and that's why they're going to lean on him again uh, tomorrow is to, uh, to to start off a series and and, and give this team an opportunity. Um, but yeah, you know, they're there. We didn't get a lot of details on what else was really going to change, you know, from a pitching perspective. We just didn't, you know, my opinion. And now I'm going to step out of talking about what coach said. I'm just going to kind of give my opinion on this. You know, I, I think a big piece of this is fastball command. Um, because Cass really made the point that, well, they did a good job going from throwing a lot of pitches outside the strike zone to throwing him in the strike zone, but giving up big hits. So it, it it's not a huge improvement. It's a little bit of an improvement, but not a huge improvement going from throwing balls to throwing fastballs in down the middle. <laughs> And they got to be able to throw to to multiple sides of the plate at four strikes. And when they can do that, then it's you know it's not just covering one part of the plate. And then you throw in a a decent off speed pitch that can also hit the zone. And then you're getting to the point where yeah, there there may be the occasional pitch that can be hit, but it's not going to be a situation where you know where you're seeing you know, a bunch of two out situations and falling behind in counts and then home runs hit by pitch home run. That's the, and, and seeing those snowball into really, really big innings. That's what we're really trying to avoid. Um, you know, those were not the specific air places that, that coach went, but I think he was more talking about, Hey, part of this is we just got to get back to, this is a game. They need to to in addition to doing what they've got to do, it is still a game, and they need to have fun, <laughs> and they need to relax and and not let those specific moments get out. You know, it get really really bad. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what I got out of what uh, out of what Coach said today. Um. So along those lines, uh, do we have any other thoughts we want to share along these lines? Chris Cass. Well, for me, it's I mean, it's it's the pitching. I mean, we know this, right? And is it going to get fixed? We don't know. And it might be just that we got to score a ton of runs every weekend and do the best we can in a Big Ten, because this isn't a new problem. This has been going on for weeks. It's not a weekend problem. It's not a midweek problem. It's a pitching problem, and it's not sustainable. You can't have to score twelve runs a game. So either they're going to fix it or they're not, or we're going to have to just out slug teams. I don't know, you know, what it's going to be. I know what it leads to. It leads to guys who are pitching while having to pitch too long, and then they get hit. So, you know, our arms are either going to execute better and perform better or they're not. 
and we're going to have to score all these runs. It's still frustrating. It's still, you know, a lot of people want to look at Reisdorf, uh, you know, coming in early in that game. A lot of people were saying, you know, he, he gave, gave him the meatball and the guy tied it on Indiana State. That guy is one of the best players on a team. They're one of the best teams, in the, you know. So I get that. that. That one I'll give you. And the fly ball, again, I mean, the wind was nuts. But, you know, we let it go by. That's six runs right there. So I understand in those situations, you're not saying like, you know, what it was, but this has been going, if it was just that, we wouldn't be talking about it. It's been going on for way too long. Um, and I hope they fix it. I mean, I don't mind 12, 11 game. It's not my favorite type of game. My favorite type of game <laughs> was like a three to one, but my most favorite game is once we win. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that is very true. Uh, yeah. To me, I, I, I very much appreciate that they are seeing what the issues are and and they're kind of immediate fairly immediate in in the scope of like by the next weekend they're pretty well being corrected it's just then there's a new problem that comes up and so as long as we see that progress where okay here's the problem we're having right now okay let's correct that Okay, well that that's leading to okay, we're having a few too many home runs. Okay, here's how we fixed that problem. I I very much appreciate that they are making that kind of progress. And and we've said it before, the baseball season's a marathon, not a sprint. It it's still relatively it it's becoming not early very quickly we're we're moving into big 10 play this weekend but that's that's where it matters right now win in big 10 play and and that's what it's gonna take yep so that that's what i'm seeing right now josh do you have something to add uh no just what i said earlier with the they're they're still trying to trying to Put guys in. I I have a, it would be very interesting to see what guys pitch this weekend because, like yep. Cass said, now it really matters. Yeah, you like to build the RPI pre pre conference. Yeah, they thought they would have this figured out by then, but it's gonna. They already made a move to push Phillips to Friday night, so it's gonna be interesting to see how they handle this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um. That's what I'm going to be looking at more than anything else. Even if the bats don't show up, the way the pitchers perform is what I'm going to be watching. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, since it is a Big Ten weekend, uh, <laughs> it is time for us to start up the annual tradition of Cass uh, kicking all of our <laughs> rear ends. So it is Big yes. Ten pick em. <laughs> Um and And in order to, to try to you know, shake this up and 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 maybe find uh, a way to to beat uh-huh. Cass. Uh, we have brought Zach Horowitz to join our group this year, so nice. Zach is also going to be picking with us. IUBase.com uh, reporter. Mm, nice. Uh, so so we'll have five of us now picking this week. Now, did did Might... I did I not lead the entire year last year, only to have her beat me in the last like two or three weeks? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Okay. And right. and I had a big and I had a big lead for part of it. <laughs> And she closed me out. And you yep. said you didn't like the Mets, Josh. That's a total <laughs> Mets move. <laughs> the fucking brains. Well, hopefully Zach will be the the magic touch here and and uh, get us some fresh blood. Not not rooting against your cast, but I am. <laughs> Well, uh, you know. it, this is one of those the, the, the first week, in, in at least the way the schedule is, the things will probably be very different next season. Um, but for this season, the last the last hopefully the last eight week, uh, it's nine week season with a bye. Um, so it's nine week season. The one thing about the, the opening week is five teams have a bye in the opening week. So there's only four series total. Um, we do not pick the series that Indiana is in. So that only leaves three series uh, to kick off. And then from here on, it'll be five series uh, a week. Um, Actually, it'll be six next week because the next week is when is when Indiana's in the bye week. Um, And then after that, it'll be five a week. So it'll be just a little bit of a a soft open to the season here. Um, And we've got three series. 
Um, we've got the uh, consensus uh, preseason Big Ten champion, uh, Iowa, um, who has been struggling, <laughs> is traveling to West Lafayette to Ex Alexander Field to take on Purdue. Um, we've got uh, Michigan State, a team that's been struggling, going uh, to uh, Bob Turtle Smith Stadium in College Park to take on Maryland, who has been is the defending champions and have, despite their uh, coaching change and uh, a lot of changes in, in player personnel, have uh, got off to the season starting very well. Um, and then the third series is uh, Michigan, uh, who has really been struggling of late, um, is traveling to Penn State, who, along with a new coach out of the ACC, uh, has been doing quite well to start off the season. Um, so uh, some very interesting storylines in these three series. So uh, we'll start with the defending champion. Cass, what are your okay. picks? Uh, well, I'm going to start with the one that was the most clear for me, and I'm picking Maryland to win their series. Um, surprisingly, that Hold was on, the only... Cass, I'm making my picks now as I'm listening to you. <laughs> Give me <a> picks. <laughs> Uh, but surprisingly out of these three series uh that was the only one where i was like okay i feel decently confident on this pick i went back and forth with the other two all day today um uh, i finally settled on iowa over purdue but it was far closer than i expected it to be and I think Michigan is going to just edge out Penn State. I know Penn State's been doing better thus far this season, and it's at Penn State, but I, I think Michigan will edge it out, but it's going to be close the whole way. So I've got Iowa, Maryland, and Michigan. Okay. Well, so we've got Chris's picks and Cass's picks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chris, for real, what do you have? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm saying I'm not, it's the best way to go. Just follow <laughs> Cass and just make her picks. <laughs> All right. First off, I got my uh, Big Ten hat here. Um, I hope you could see it with the blue screen. This was when they won the uh, tournament. And we got Schwarber, Travis, and Demuth signing it from back then. They signed nice. it in 14. So I wanted to wear that for luck. I got the Bucky's Cup. <laughs> I'm hoping you can see that as well. Uh so I'm breaking out all the stops because I want to win this year. So <laughs> the first pick I'm going to make uh, is Penn State, just because I don't like Michigan. You know, they got our old coach. They got Fegley. You know, there's a lot of places these guys could have, you know, went to work. I don't know. They didn't have to come to the Big Ten to do that. But, you know, Tracy Skit was, was great, obviously, for this team. And Fegley had a great career here. But go somewhere else. There's a lot of divisions. There's a lot of places you could have went. They're 7-14 and 14 now, so I would probably figure they're the underdog anyway. So I'm going to go with Penn State. My second pick, I know it's going to seem really odd to do this, but I have a strategy because I would rather them lose in basketball this weekend. So I'm going to take Purdue because I'd rather them lose as the one seed in basketball. So I'm thinking, what are the odds of both? You know, So breaks ball will win. I, and, I see uh, a lot of pettiness going on here with your first two picks. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I never would have thought that. There's a you. theme. You know, and this is why I never win these picks. But. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got Purdue and uh, Penn State. And I got to tell you, this one, I mean, Maryland has been a buzzsaw. They're 7-0. and all. Uh, We're talking, what, th they've won three in a row. They're 7-0 and all at home. They're 16-5 and five on the season. They haven't lost a Big Ten series, I think, since like 1942 uh, or somewhere abouts there. So to go against Maryland would probably wild. So I got Michigan State. Yeah. <laughs> so those are my three. Michigan State, Purdue, and Penn State. Josh. Okay. Well, I'm going to make sure we're all three different. Um <laughs> You know, this early, there are certain teams, Nebraska, Rutgers, Maryland, Iowa, with the track record that when it comes to Big Ten play, you're going to see their names at the top. So it's going to be hard for me to pick against those teams this early until I see what they're going to do. So I'm going to take Iowa and Maryland. 
um, in there too. And then I'm going to take Penn State at home against Michigan. So Iowa on the road, Penn State, and Maryland at home. All right. So, so far we've all been different. And that's with only three series. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, yep. The uh, the next, uh, I will go ahead and list uh, Zach Horwitz, his picks uh, match Josh's. So he he agrees with Josh, Iowa, Maryland, and Penn State. Well, that's the kiss of death, then, I'm sure. <laughs> well, so, no, not sorry, Zach. No, no. Well, that's true. It's the that's beginning. True. Yeah. That's true. You were killing it uh, in the beginning. Yep. And uh, for me, uh, I am. I'm actually going, I'm taking a pattern from the SEC last Ooh. week. The SEC had seven series last week. Uh, and there was really only one pattern to who won SEC series. And that was the home team won every SEC series last week. Yeah. Uh, so I am following that pattern and I am picking Purdue, Maryland, and Penn State. I'm going with the home teams. Uh, a lot of them, again, well, Maryland, that was if that had been the other way around as far as location, I still would have picked Maryland. But uh, the other two, okay. I, uh, I, I kind of felt. won two in a row, Carl. They won two in a row. They're undefeated <laughs> at home, but they're playing on the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm going with home teams. Uh, so so I'll, I'll, I'll be hoping for home teams for all of the Big Ten, including the, the fourth series. So <laughs> nice. The sweep, the Homer sweep, the Homer Simpson, it's called. So that is our picks. Those will uh, I'll get those up late tonight, uh, and those will be up on uh, iubase.com if you wish to uh, peruse those picks. Um, but again, that's just going to get us started. Only three series. We will have six series to pick next week. Twice as many. That'll be the biggest the biggest of the season, um, given that uh, Indiana will be the one that's on a buy. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Talking Hoosier Baseball. For more on Indiana University Baseball, hit up iubase.com. For Josh Bennett, Chris Feeney, and Cassidy Palmer, I'm Carl James. See you at the BART.